Good morning, my brothers and sisters, family of God, and friends, everybody that's watching, everybody that connects with me weekly, Mondays through Fridays. I try to do these morning devos like around 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here. So winners with a Z Z.org. Also on all the social media platforms that I'm on and all the podcast platforms that I'm on. I try my best to get these up live and to get them going for the week. Devotional is key right now to my life. Waking up, setting the day first with the Lord Jesus Christ, setting the, gate, the day off with God. Amen. And setting the day off right. Amen. And, um, the gay word slipped out and it's crazy because I was looking at the definition of love biblically and looking for videos to put up for my like intro kind of thing and love is love came up that phrase love is love that's celebrated by the pride community and it goes right with what I was going to say and well we're going to go for the morning devotional today so it's no coincidence why that slipped out so with that said Welcome. I welcome everybody to this podcast, everybody to this morning Devo, no matter if you're white, black, Hispanic, Latin, um, wherever you're from, whatever your um, preference is in life, you are all welcome to this morning Devo to hear the word of God, the living word of God, the God of heaven and earth, the one who sets his foot on this earth as a footstool, right? That's his footstool and heaven is his throne. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one who died and rose again. Amen. So I'll try to clear that up so that way you know exactly who I'm talking about. And not really what I'm talking about, but who I'm talking about when I speak about the scriptures. Because this is not really a religion. Christianity is really not a religion. It's about a relationship with God. Amen. So religious people will always try to find ways or try to figure out ways of how to make things right with God. But the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ is Jesus figuring out. He already figured out how to reach man. So it's not the other way around. Religion, man trying to reach God, the gospel, God trying to reach man. And that's what I'm all about, the gospel message of the Lord Jesus. So welcome, welcome, welcome to everybody that's logging in, everybody's connecting, everybody's listening. And I just pray that you're going to get blessed by this biblical definition of love. And we could also do it as a test. And every time I read the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7, I fail, I fail the love test every single time. I don't know about you, but I fail it all the time just because of the way I am. Sergio, God bless you, my bro. Long time no see. God bless. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So listen, we're going to go into 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, any prayer requests like that, if you want to make them public, you know what to do on the live chat. Also, if you're listening from the podcast, there's a way to connect with me from whatever platform you're listening to the podcast on because there's so many different platforms. I can't narrow it down, but there should be, be a way. I trust there should be a way, right, uh, for you to connect with me from the podcast for the listeners. So... With that said, also, if you know somebody else right now that doesn't have social media, that's not on social media, they're not on Twitter, they're not on TikTok, they're not on Facebook, they're not on Instagram, none of that, and you would like for them to see this or hear this at least, you can send them right to the website, soulwinnerswithaz.org, and right there they could check out what we're doing and what's going on with the Sellout Radio Network and with the Soul Winners Ministry. Amen? So send them right over to the website. And don't be afraid. There's only an invitation. The, least, the worst thing they could do is say, no, I'm not going to that morning Devo. Amen? My, my beautiful wife sends blessings to everyone um, this morning. Um, God bless you, babe. Thank you for listening in and tuning in. Pastor Michael Jakes says, praise the Lord. My brother, amen. Oh, we praise the Lord up in here and said I read a network so when it's ink. So it's your brother Sam Lopez. Let's take a minute to pray. If I don't see any prayer requests, I'll give you 30 seconds because I know from the time I'm asking for the prayer request, it's gonna be like a 15 to 30 second lag. So I'll wait the 30 seconds. And if not, I'll just pray. Then give everybody a minute. We'll get everybody a minute to share this out with as many people as many people as we can, and then we'll take it from there. Amen. God is good. Every Every single day of my life, God has been good. Even this morning, early in the morning, like around 4.30 in the morning, I was outside of uh, my house spraying bug spray because I, I got raided again by these flying ants. And I found another spot where they are coming into the house from, from the outside in. If anybody knows about flying ants, you know those things are pain to kill. They're, they're just everywhere. And I found at least thousands of them on my windowsill. And then I looked. There was a little crack in my windowsill. That's how they were getting in. So 
Uh, I'm really groggy right now because I was up um, so early um, fighting bugs, literally fighting bugs because I don't like insects. So um, that's just a quick short story of why I'm a little groggy this morning. So with that said, let's, um, oh, we got a prayer request. Pray for my marriage for Sergio. Yes, Sergio, I'll be praying for your marriage. Marriage is uh, a beautiful thing, but it's not the easiest thing. It's a beautiful thing. But it's not the easiest thing. I believe for, for men, I believe the greatest challenge in our lives, I'm just saying from experience, is marriage. You know, two people who are different, maybe different backgrounds, different everything, right? Uh, male and female marriage, right? And it's difficult to just put things together sometimes. But it's so worth it um, to work on your marriage. Be on purpose. Be purposeful working in your marriage. Amen. And... The secret sauce that me and my wife has is that we have Jesus in the middle of our marriage. And we've been married over 20 years. So we have, if Jesus was not the center of our marriage, there will be no marriage right now. So, um, Sergio, I'll be praying for that very important prayer. So let's take it to the Lord. Amen. In prayer. Uh, so that way everyone will know the power of God's. Um, when people pray to the Lord, when we pray to the Lord, the, the power of God's word over the life of those prayers. The promise is in the prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every single person that's connecting, every single person that's going to connect later on. I pray I had your protection. I pray peace be still and know that you are God in their lives. I pray, Lord God, that there will be no distraction. I come against demonic influence. I come against ancestral curses. I come against demonic forces that try to infiltrate the family from the husband, the wife, the children, the whole family makeup. I pray, Lord God, that you would define what love is today in your word, through your word, Lord God, the biblical definition of love, how it's so important to know how you are and how you define love. So, Father God, teach us, show us your way, your truth, and your life today. And I pray for Arquin Angels, Minister Angels, right now to Sergio Barbosa's house, his life, his household, his marriage. I pray for peace in his marriage. I pray, Lord God, that you will strengthen their marriage, that you will be the center of the marriage, and that you, Lord God, will develop a way in my brother Sergio my friend and my bro, that you would develop a way in his heart, that he would shine brightly the love of Christ over his wife, speak the word over his life, and be that man of God that you have created him to be, so that way his family could thrive, and his family would be more than surviving, but thriving in the things that you have for him and his wife. I pray faith, hope, and love over his wife and as well, and his marriage as well, and his whole family in the name of Jesus. And we all say amen and amen. I believe we have the most powerful prayer of warriors that's connected to this morning devo from ever in the whole history of my ministry amen and the lord's ministry amen so i'm just boasting on how powerful prayer is and i'm just joking we're not the best amen but we can be heard by the lord and when your prayer is heard by the lord hey um get ready good things are going to happen in your life because god's a good god amen so let's take a minute to share this out when we come back we'll hit up um uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7. Biblical definition. Love is. Love is. Amen. And we're going to find out what love is shortly in this minute. I'll be right back. Man, we're back. If this is your first time, welcome to the Morning Devo. My name is Brother Sam Lopez, aka DJ Sambrock, aka Brother Sam. Amen. So, welcome to the Morning Devo. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We call this the love chapter. Christians call this the love chapter. And also, um, it's a test. 
It's a test, right? To see if you're really walking in love, to see if you really know what the biblical definition of love is, to see if we are in this definition. Amen. And you could you could do a lot of things with the scripture. Wherever the wherever you see the word love, you could put Jesus. Where is that? Wherever you put wherever you see the word love in First Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7, you could put Jesus there. It'd be nice if I could put my name there. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. Check this out. Let's read the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth, whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Every circumstance. Now that's love defined by a living, holy, loving God in His Word, inspiring Apostle Paul to write that by Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write that. So what I like to do with this verse is, first of all, that's the test. If you're walking in love, you want to know if you're walking in true, true biblical love, see if you're being patient and kind. See if you're not jealous or boastful or proud. Right now, pride is being celebrated the month of June. I think we're still in the month of June. And when I hear the word pride, I think of proud. And love is not prideful. Love is not proud. Amen. Um, Love is kind and love is not jealous or boastful. Amen. At the same time. So it's interesting that um, the community that celebrates the pride in June, that they say that love is love. That's their slogan. That's what they say. Love is love. But the Bible says love is something. Love is patient and kind. Love is. So wherever you see the word love here in this scripture, you could actually put, I wish I could put my name. Let's see. Maybe my wife could agree sometimes, sometimes that Sam is patient and kind. Sometimes. Maybe my wife could say that. I don't know. But I know for sure, 100%, that wherever you see love in the scripture, you could put the Lord Jesus. For instance, Jesus is patient and kind. Jesus is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Jesus does not demand his own way. Jesus is not irritable. Jesus keeps no record of when he was being wronged. Amazing. Do you keep a record when people do wrong things to you? I have to deal with that in my life too. I said, I remember they did me dirty. That person over there did me dirty. That's not walking in love. Jesus does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out because Jesus is the truth. Jesus never gives up, never loses faith. He's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. So if you want to know what the biblical definition of love is, we just read it. And it has a whole bunch of different moving parts all together. Now, as a man, I can't satisfy all of this love right here. Amen. That's why I rely on the one who lives inside of me, the Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, God, to do the loving. Amen. Because we have the lover, which is the father, the loved one, which is Jesus, and the spirit of love, which is Holy Spirit, God. We have the triune love package inside of every single believer. We have it. So although we on our human side, on our natural side, we can't fulfill all of this all the time. Maybe we could get some of these things right for a long time, but then we fail somewhere. But the one who lives inside of us, every single believer, Holy Spirit, God, he never fails this test. He wins all the time. He is love. God is love. And he's everything that love is defined right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7. Now tell me that's not amazing. Tell me that only God can satisfy this love chapter. Tell me only God can satisfy this biblical definition of love. Amen. Sister Marisol, God bless you. Good morning. And may God bless all. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming by to the Morning Devo. Brother Robert, God bless, bro. Forgiving those close hurts are a tough one for me to forget. Yes. Hard to forget. When you're hurt by someone, especially someone that you love, family, whoever, it's hard to forget. And we have to walk in this biblical love. So I don't think we can do it without God in our lives. People who say, oh, I, f- I forgive you. Don't worry. I forgot about it. I think they're lying. 
because I know when I'm hurt by someone I love, uh, I kind of like put it to the side, right? But I kind of like never forget it. It comes up every now and then. But God chooses to forget every single wrongdoing that has been done to him. He chooses to put our sins and our shortcomings. He chooses to forget those things. It's not like he has amnesia. It's not like he's getting old, that he's losing his memory. No, he chooses to forget. And we can make a choice to forget and forgive, right? But it's not easy. Like Robert said, I agree with you, my bro. Amen. It's not easy at all. But we could do this with biblical um, when we have the biblical principle of love, when we define love biblically, we're on the right track. Amen. Using one word, how would you sum up what love is? One word. Um, me, obviously, would be the word God. He is love. Amen. So if you could use one word to describe or to sum up what love is, what that, what would that one word be? Anybody um, on that? Yeah. Anyone? It's more like overlooking. Yeah. Overlooking sin. Over, overlooking wrongdoing, over, overlooking hurt, right? Because we have to deal with it. And everybody, I probably hurt people. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I I've haven't hurt people, right? Or if I have hurt people. I wouldn't be surprised because I'm not perfect. I don't get it right all the time. But I know someone who always gets it right. His name is the Lord Jesus. So I'm gonna, if I'm going to boast about anything in my life, I'm going to boast about what God has done in my life through the Lord Jesus by way of Holy Spirit. I'm going to boast about that. Can't be boastful about anything I'm doing. Can't be boastful or prideful about anything I've done. So I'm just going to boast on the Lord. You know, give me that liberty, right? Because I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to boast in what God has done in my life. Amen. And you should be doing the same. If God changed you, if God restored you, if God gave you a new life, amen. Born again experience, restored your marriage, restored your finances, all that stuff. Give him praise and boast about what he's done in your life. Persistence, yep. Key word, brother Robert. You on a you on a road, man. Persistence, yep. Because you don't do one thing for one time and say, okay, now I'm I'm walking in love. No, you have to be persistent. You have to be consistent, persistent, and keep on moving in love. Amen. Step by step, every step that we take towards this biblical love language, amen. We could get it done. Only through God, though, we can we get it done. So using one word, how would you sum up what love is? And he says, persistence. That's the one word. That's a good word um, to sum up love. It's continual. You keep on going. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give out, right? Just continue in persistence. Persistence. Amen. Amen. Sister Marisol says mercy. If she could sum up the one word, is mercy. That's a good one to sum up what love is. And we need mercy. Listen, God is a God of grace. He gives us all what we don't deserve. And he holds back what we do deserve. Amen. So he gives us everything that we don't deserve. Everything that, you know, I didn't deserve, God gave me. Gave me and every single believer too. And he has a universal um, grace as well. For people who don't even believe in him, they're still under the grace of God. Right? Well, so they have to make that decision. They should make a decision to trust in him, believe in him. But if not, they're under grace. But that grace, you know, is a limited grace when you're not a believer, as far as I read in the scriptures. But when you're a believer, you have that grace. And mercy is him holding back what we do deserve. Well, the sin, the Bible says sin leads to death. And if we continue to sin and have our sinful ways of living, well, we're going to die dying, right? Because we're already dying already. But we're going to die spiritually if we don't get it right when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, forgiveness of our sins and all that stuff. If we don't get that right, if we don't come to the Lord Jesus to ask for his forgiveness while we know what to do and how we, how, why, what, blah, by what we know what to do and who to go to. And if we don't do it, we reject the gospel, then we are willfully sinning. We're doing it and we're, you know, we're smudging the sin all in the Lord's face, kind of. I'm saying spiritually, um, figuratively, figuratively speaking. Amen. I'm not saying that we actually smudge dirt on God's face. But that's what um, we're doing, um, figuratively speaking. We're saying no to Jesus, no to his forgiveness. So we're living in sin, willfully sinning. And that's not good. It's not going to work out either. Amen. Good morning. God, uh, God bless you. Brother Sam. Amen. Sister Lissac, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the morning. Devo, it's good to see you. She sends blessings to all. Amen. Consistent is another one and definitely mercy. Yeah, consistent is another word for love. I sum up the word love with consistency and mercy. Definitely. Yes. And grace. Yes. All of that. 
See how we're, we're, we're summing up what love is? Because I believe that God is doing these things in our lives and we're saying, oh, we could pinpoint some words that God is, has done in our lives and we could sum up what love is. Which of these definition definitions, not one definition, which of these definitions of love stands out, stands out to you right now? For me, uh, it, will always, it will always be, to me, at least for this time in my life, it would be um, love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful. Right? Never gives up. That giving up part, man, is um, taking us uh, for a loop. A lot of people are just giving up. Circumstances are hitting them in their lives and they're just giving up. And they're not, they could be like an inch or half an inch away from their victory in God and they're giving up right there. Um, you know, they're giving up on their kids, they're giving up on their marriage, they're giving up on their parents, they're giving up on the loved ones in their lives, they're giving up on their siblings. Listen, I've been praying for my family for years and years and years and years about all being saved. Amen. And slowly but surely, people are coming to the Lord and my family. Praise the Lord. Amen. But that waiting period is tough. Amen. Because if this is truly true, if the gospel is truly true, great. We all get to spend eternity with the people that you love forever. Right. If it's true. And if it's if it's true then the opposite applies. If people in my family reject the Lord Jesus and reject the gospel and they have, you know, instead of having different religions, they follow the Lord Jesus and be saved, that would be great. But if they reject, the Bible says they have a whole eternity separated from God. Now, what kind of person would I be, right? If I say that I love my family, if I say that I love my children, if I say I love my parent, if I say I love my siblings, and I don't share the gospel with them, what kind of person would I be? If I truly believe this is the way, the truth, and the life, this is the path to go, am I really walking in love? Am I being patient with them? Am I'm, you know, I must be being rude to them then if I'm not going to share what I really believe. Whether they believe in what I believe or not, at least I'm sharing and expressing what I believe to be truth, what I be believe to be hope, what I believe to be faith, what I believe to be the biblical definition of love. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 13. Read the whole chapter for yourself. Amen. So you can get a better grasp of what's going on right here. So that's what stands out to me. Amen. The whole the whole chapter always stands out to me because I'm like, I put myself to that test and I'm saying, man, I was impatient and kind today. Man, I was prideful. Man, I was rude. So you start failing these things, right? Um, but keep no records of being wronged. That's big for a lot of people, uh, like we spoke about earlier. And if we could just take our hurts and our pains to God, I believe we'll be living on a more higher level, right? And we'll be walking in a high level in life. Not, not you know, not um, trying to be over spiritual or anything, but if we don't take anything to the Lord, other than just praying to him and asking for what we need instead of walking with him and allowing to walk with him, then we're just wasting time. Love is patience, kind, hope, believing. God is love because with him, everything and anything is possible. Yes, Sister Lissette, anything is possible. Anything with God is possible. Amen. So there's no limits. God took off the, the lid a long time ago. Amen. Um, in my life, when I gave my life to him, because Although I was going around telling people I loved them, uh, I don't know if my definition of love was accurate when I was telling people, oh, I love you. When I was in, you know, into the boyfriend, girlfriend thing, when I was into relationships early in life, I think I was rolling in lust. Well, what about you? I mean, I think I was just lusting after these girls and after these women, right? I don't think I was really in love because if I was truly in love, I would have waited before we uh, had any sexual situations going on. I would have been patient. I would have been more kind. I would have not been rude. I would have been loving Jesus. So therefore, I would have known how to love somebody else. I truly believe if you don't have God, the love of your soul in your life, I don't believe that you really know how to love. If we don't have this definition of love in our lives, I truly believe we're rolling in preference. We're rolling in lust. We want what we want and we're just going after it. And that's like emotion. That's like almost like the flesh taking over and redefining what love really is. And that's the way I was living my life before, before Jesus. Then he comes into my life. He didn't, I didn't find him. He found me. I was lost, right? He comes into my life and then he starts showing me true love. 
agape love, the love of God, unconditional love. And from then on, I was like, man, I was really off when it came to this whole biblical definition of love. I was really off that by saying, telling everything, um, telling everybody I love them and saying I love this. I love this soda. I love this water. I love that movie. I, I was just throwing that word love all around the place. But when God changed my life, amen, and he started showing me what, showing me what true love is, I was like, wow, um, this is great. And this is only the love that God could give us is his love, his patience, his kindness, right? He's a perfect, perfect love cast out all fear. Amen. And that perfect love only comes from the love of a holy, righteous God. Amen. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. There's different kinds of love or ways to love. Not everyone understands. Yes. The Bible talks about at least four um, ways of love. There's agape love. That's God's love, unconditional love. There's storge love. That's parental love. You know, that's that protective love. That's phileo love. That's that brotherly love. And there's erotic love, right? Eros love, where we get the word erotic from. And that love should be only between a husband and a wife, a male and a female in the marriage bed. And that life that we share with our spouse, right, should be a love that's eros. It should have some eros in there. I love Eros love with my wife. Amen. Because that's the, the love that keeps things spicy, keeps things exciting. Amen. But um, before Jesus, I took that Eros love and that thing took over me. And I was doing stuff that if I was married with girls, right? If you know what I'm saying, before I got married. And that caused a lot of consequences, a lot of issues um, because I didn't know any better. Amen. So everybody else was doing it. So I started falling into that Eros love with random people. Amen. And um, some for a long time, some for a short time, some for just one time, if you get what I'm saying. So um, we've, we got a lot to learn. Amen. I know I got a lot to learn. So when Jesus changed my life, when he saved me and rescued me, I found the error of my so-called love. And then I started repenting, turning from that um, way of thinking. Amen. And God started renewing my mind and he changed my heart when it came to the love to find. So love is everything that God says love is. How about that? I know people saying, uh, it's a group of people saying, a community saying love is love. And they say live your love out loud or love out loud or whatever the slogans are. But if it's not a biblical love, then it's just a human love. It's just a uh, a way to satisfy the cravings of our lust, the way of satisfying our preference, the way of satisfying all these things, and then we're putting the label of love over it. I see this all the time with young couples, amen, they're just trying to make it. They love Jesus, They, or maybe they don't love Jesus, maybe they're atheists, but they're young, and there's a lot of things going on in the younger like makeup of life, and everything around young people right now and, and the younger generation that surrounds them is telling them to do whatever they want to do at whatever time they want to do it with whoever they want to do it with. And they're going to stamp love on that. They say, do what you love. Love is love. But then when you read the scripture, you like, you got to, you kind of like get this feeling like, am I truly walking in love or I'm doing it my own way and stamping the label of love? You know, I see it all the time and I pray for every single young couple. It's not easy. It's totally not easy to be in a relationship with a young lady or a young man. Right. And have it like strictly just holding hands. Right. Because things happen. There's a long time. There's pressure from your friends. There's social media. There's movies. Everything is promoting the opposite. Everything. Amen. Then you come to the house of God. You get the word of God. You could even be like in a Bible study with the opposite sex and things might go wrong. Instead of a Bible study, it would be a human study after a while. So we have to be careful, have to be mindful, have to be realistic that we have to go through these issues in life. And we have to look at what love is defined by God and compare it to the love that we're talking about or that we're labeling to one another. So I hope somebody out there was blessed. Uh, I know that this definition of love is is really um, not the easiest thing to deal with because um, if you take this as a test, right, you realize, man, I need help and I'm all messed up because I know every time I look at this scripture, I'm like, I'm not always patient. I'm not always kind. Sometimes I'm jealous. Sometimes I'm boastful. Sometimes I'm proud. Sometimes I'm rude. Like, and, and God says love is not that, right? 
And whatever God says love is, that's what it is. Whatever God says love isn't, that's what God, that's what love isn't. Right? So it's like really black and white right here. It's like cut and dry. Like there's no there's no way around this scripture without you realizing, man, only God could love me that way. And you could ask God to show you how to be that type of lover. Amen. And he'll do it in your life. Amen. If you trust him, if you put your faith in him and your hope in him. Because love um, doesn't rejoice about injustice. So when you see something happen bad to somebody, even if they deserve it, we're not supposed to rejoice in that. Right? Also, love never gives up. You have a loved one, never give up on your loved ones. Never give up on those who are outside of the kingdom and you love them and you want to come inside the kingdom. I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of young ladies telling um, talking about that they're, you know, they head over heels for a guy, but and they're in church, they're serving the Lord, the girls serving the Lord or whatever, and they're saying, Oh no, but if if we get together, you know, I'll lead him to the Lord, you know, he'll get saved afterwards. And then um eight out of those ten stories, I only know two of the stories that actually worked out that way. But out of ten that I've heard, um only like two of those things really worked out. The other eight was like the guy never came to the Lord. Because we don't save people. Only God saves people. So um, real quick, a bonus tip for young ladies out there. A guy that's not serving the Lord, right, and says that he'll go to church just to see you, be with you, whatever. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's going to church just to be with you. God could work in his life. But just because he's coming to church doesn't mean that he's going to be saved. Doesn't mean that's going to be a Christian. Doesn't mean that's going to be a changed man. And young ladies, I don't think you'll like that man anymore. Right. That was so attracted to you, pursuing you, because once he gets saved, right, he's going to realize that it has to be hands off until he gives you the ring. And at this culture right now, um, that's corny. A lot of people are not trying to wait. They're trying to do what they want to do now, um, reap the benefits now of marriage. And then, you know, just ask for forgiveness later, later from the Lord. And God sees all of that. And he's not he's not thrown by that. He's like, OK, you're trying to play the Lord Jesus is not going to happen. Amen. But I know we have to deal with it. I know I'm being realistic. I know I've dealt with it before Jesus. I was doing everything um, like married people would do. So I'm guilty. Amen. But God, you know, says not guilty now. Once he comes into your life, changes your life, gives you the perspective of what love is defined in the scriptures. Then we start learning and we start restoring, regaining knowledge and wisdom and understanding. And then we can move from that point of knowledge forward. Can't do nothing about the past. Consequences are still coming for all the bad decisions I've made. But hey, at least I have today moving forward. Keep on moving in the word of God, in the life of God, in the eternal uh, like process that he's given every single one of us. And we can move in victory over everything that went wrong before Jesus. I'm just saying. So I hope you're blessed. I hope everybody takes something out of this. Read the whole chapter for yourself. First Corinthians chapter 13 and see what God will do in your life going forward the devil dresses up well to try to win yep the devil will come not as a ghoul or a goblin or a demonic force that will scare you away he actually wants to come to something that will attract you he wants to whisper in your ear he wants to come as a good-looking woman good-looking man outside of your marriage he wants to come as a flatterer somebody who has some sweet things to say about you he wants to come in the form of drugs sex and alcohol violence he wants to come like in the form of an angel he yeah he, he's not gonna come to you in his realness and his real he's not gonna reveal his true self to you because then you'll run you'll be like whoa i don't want no parts he's gonna come to you with something that pleases your flesh that pleases the gunman, right? the flesh. And he wants to really try to invade your mind with thoughts that are not holy. And he doesn't want to partner with the Holy Spirit. He wants to be the unholy spirit that's forcing you to partner with that. So be careful of the devil. Thank you, Sister Lissette, for reminding that we do have an enemy that's trying to wipe this whole definition of love from the planet of Earth, Earth right? You're welcome. It's always a blessing when I step in your Bible study. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you as well. I hope everybody's blessed. Until the next time, God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember, God is good and God is love. Peace.